I want to uh, welcome to the program Yamini uh, Yamini Ayer. Uh, Yamini, it's been uh, it's been quite a day, uh, and as I was saying, uh, both the states have actually just flipped uh, on expectations in the sense that uh, the pollsters were calling for a very close, uh, too close, to, uh, uh, an edge for the national conference and the Congress in Jammu and Kashmir, but a hung assembly where they may have been dependent on the PDP or the independents may have played a role. Uh, none of that happened. And uh, in Haryana, of course, we've seen what happened. We've also seen Jairam Ramesh uh, actually challenging uh, the transparency of the electoral process, which is very unique for Indian elections. It doesn't usually happen that way. Uh, Chandra Sutta Dogra here and even Yogendra Yadav before that, Jaggi, everybody's been making the same point, Sandeep, uh, that in the end, the silent voter saw too much domination in a very visible JAT leadership, uh, both in terms of the Huda family as well as them sort of representing this one very assertive, even aggressive community and that, you know, boomerang for the Congress. How do you read both states, Yamini? Um, Barkha, I can't uh, claim to have any more knowledge than anybody else. I think that uh, where uh, what where, where the sort of broad public discourse was going in terms of the election, um, the voter has really thrown up a very, very, very different result in Haryana in particular. Um, and I think, uh, you know, in hindsight, there are many uh, ways in which this has been interpreted. I think the, there are two big questions that uh, we need to ask of uh, how elections are being understood, interpreted, which political parties themselves need to be doing. Because my own sense is uh, that uh, not only uh, have all of us as observers, analysts, commentators, uh, people who are excited and engaged with elections as a democratic process uh, are asking, even political parties interpreted this election quite differently. I think the BJP was not expecting the kind of victory it received. The Congress was expecting, of course, uh, to be th that this would be a complete landslide. Uh, I think there is a, a re the reality is that there is a deep social churning that is underway in India um, and lots of expected understandings of the way different social forces play together, consolidate on some occasions um, in favor of uh, the BJP versus Congress, consolidate around caste, consolidate around Hindutva, consolidate around agrarian versus non-agrarian, consolidate around rural versus urban are all up for grabs. Um, and the voter has different ways in which it is interpreting and presenting uh, its, its perspective to uh, to the uh, two political parties, and I think, but but the two broad lessons that are worth uh, recognizing, um, there was a general assumption that, uh, or, or in some quarters, that this uh, the post the general elections, um, that uh, there has been a kind of uh, pulling back of the Modi juggernaut, pulling back of the Hindutva juggernaut. The fourth party system is resilient; it's here to stay, and it needs to be better understood and engaged with better. Um, there was a lot of talk about the RSS BJP relationship, the role of the RSS as very core to mobilization uh, for elections is once again uh, visible for everybody to see. Lots of interpretations about how that relationship unfolds, what uh, over interpretations of Mohan Bhagwat's speeches often uh, in the aftermath of the 2024 uh, general election and even a few days ago. Um, I, don't, I think it's a much more complex relationship. It's a relationship of dependency. It has its own rhythm and its own way of working. Working, it's here to stay. And any other political party in it, all its strategizing has to understand and recognize that. For the Congress, hubris has always been its challenge. Uh, inner party uh, disorganization has always been its challenge. We have often said in recent times that you can see this visibly even in the BJP. But there's another issue, which is... Um, that the emergence of the Congress under Rahul Gandhi over the general elections and his kind of, uh, in a sense, coming out as a leader, leader with credibility, leader with legitimacy, which was something that was a challenge uh, until uh, only about a year ago, uh, has emerged while he has distanced himself from the hurly-burly complexity, uh, West interests of the party. And um, it is that that uh, has to be recognized. You cannot uh, build an ideological alternative or at least attempt to build an ideological alternative uh, to a very deeply rooted social organization based political party without taking your organization along. And I think that is the lesson that the Congress has to learn from this. That 
Rahul Gandhi's leadership is attempting to articulate an ideology. We can argue whether that is a right or wrong one, uh, but it's attempting to articulate an ideological alternative, but it's doing so without taking the party along from the grassroots worker upwards. I don't think that many of the critical issues that were raised, whether it is Agnipat, whether it is the women's issue, whether it is the farmer's issue, are issues that don't exist on the ground. How the voter chooses to respond to it uh, is the issue. And the last thing I'll say on this is, I think it's now a good opportunity for the BJP, uh, given the Haryana victory, uh, to perhaps try and at least reopen a sensible conversation with farmers on the issue of, agra of the agrarian. Agrarian distress is real. The farm laws were not the right answer to a complicated problem, both in terms of the ways in which they were presented and its design. Perhaps now we can have a serious dialogue between farmers and government to try over the next few years to arrive at a serious uh, response to what is a deep crisis.